And I need all of you to stop what you're doing and listen. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Chasing Latitudes with your host, myself, Christopher Cousteau. Now, the only thing I need to know today is what you know about you know, but um, bum, hilarious pun. Now, if you've been following along with my channel for the last couple of weeks, you should know by now that I just covered most of all the new Beneteau sailing models. And today, we're going to start the process of doing the exact same thing for Jeannot. Now, if you don't know anything at all about Jeannot, Jeannot is another French builder and is in fact owned by the Beneteau Group. So it falls into the category of one of the largest manufacturers of sailboats in today's market. and to date, there are currently, as of today, roughly around 100,000 Genoa sailboats sailing in the world. Now, if that's not an impressive feat, I'm not sure I know what an impressive feat is. How dare you? So today we're gonna kick this party off with the Juno 349. Now this in my opinion is an absolutely stunning vessel and believe it or not, can occasionally be had for around $100,000. At that price range, I don't know if there's a better deal on the market these days. That is again, of course, if you can actually find one for that amount. Now there's been one for sale in Fajardo, Puerto Rico for a while that was listed as 100 grand, but the broker never likes to call people back, so it may or may not still be for sale. Now there is also one listed in the US Virgin Islands for 104K. This may or may not be the exact same one that was listed in Fajardo at 99K. But there is also several available in Croatia for right around 100K. So these can in fact currently, as of today's video, be found on the market for around 100 grand. These are absolutely stunning vessels and they check all the boxes I generally look for. A fold down swim platform with a walk through transom dual helms and a length at the waterline versus length overall of a less than five foot difference. In addition to that, she was first built in 2014. Now again, that is something that I always look for. We want to get a vessel that is right around 2000 or newer. Now, because it's 2022, 2000 is really pushing the envelope. Right around 20 years of a vessel's age is when you're going to have to step right in and do a major, major refit on that vessel. That'll include standing rigging, sails, all kinds of things. So what we want to do when we go out looking for a new to us used sailboat is we want to get something as new as possible so that we don't step right into an entire refit job on our vessel. Now you don't learn anything about sailing by sitting on the hard and repairing fiberglass. You learn about your vessel and sailing by actually being out in the ocean sailing. So we want to get ourselves a vessel that we can hit the high seas tomorrow and start sailing. And the Juno 349 falls right into that category. It comes in with a length at the waterline of 30.84 feet, a length overall of 33.92 feet, and a beam of 11.29 feet with a maximum draft of six and a half feet. Now, something that is nice about the Genoa is that it does come with a variety of drafts. You can do the deep draft, you can do a shoal draft, and it also has a lifting keel. So no matter where you're sailing in the world, this vessel's keel design will fit right into your needs. And that's what matters in the world of sailing. Now, the 349 also comes in the two cabin, one head version, as well as a three cabin, one head version. And she is in fact a CEA rated vessel. Once again, that means she's capable of crossing oceans. She's built to the European standards, which is the CEA rating, which means it will be capable of sustaining itself in the conditions generally encountered when crossing oceans. 
The Juno 349 also won 2015 Boat of the Year by Cruising World. Again, these new vessels are really absolutely stunning to behold. And if you ever get yourself a chance to go and get on one of these, I suggest you do just that because the use of space in these French built vessels is absolutely second to none. They take advantage of every single little nook and cranny in order to provide you with the best user experience and ease of use on the market. Something you should always keep in mind is when buying yourself a new to you used fancy dancy yacht is the availability of customer service and as you know they have over 150 distributors worldwide you know has in fact established a professional distributor network in 50 different countries that are all experienced and regularly trained on the Juno product line and the newer models each of these distributors is prepared to advise their owners and provide them with fantastic fantastic service that you should all expect from a sailboat manufacturer when you're going to be spending this kind of money. The ability to pick up the phone, give someone a jingling jing, and get a hold of somebody, actually talk to them, and tell them what in the world is going on with your vessel is something that gives you peace of mind that is second to none. The simple ability to be able to pick up your phone and actually get a hold of somebody and discuss your vessel is something they should actually be charging for. But hey, they're there for you and it's free of charge. A few things Jeannot has to say is that elegance is the hallmark of Jeannot's sailboats. Designed by renowned naval architects, they feature all the qualities of great cruising yachts, pure, clean lines, excellent performance, and comfortable handling, as well as a bright and spacious interior. Every detail has been carefully studied to bring their customers satisfaction and ensure their safety at sea. Now remember, ladies and gentlemen, safety is always number one, and something that is incredibly unsafe is a lot of the things we're seeing on YouTube these days. People doing these repairs on their vessel when they have really... Mm, no idea what they're doing. This creates a very, very dangerous vessel, and we can see that play out with things breaking at sea and causing these big disastrous situations. Now, you don't ever want to be in that type of situation. Again, that is another reason why I always suggest getting as new of a vessel as you possibly can. When it comes to sailboat maintenance and repairs, a lot of people love to try and do this themselves. And a lot of it can, in fact, be accomplished by yourself. But there are some things that people are doing today on YouTube that just is simply not safe. And you can see it play right out as it just did. Now, I don't want to mention any names, but you guys should know who's doing what and whose vessel's breaking where. So that's something to keep in mind with a newer vessel you don't have to track down and wonder how many previous owners it has it's usually only gonna have one or two if you get something right around 2005 or newer and then that way you don't have to wonder how many repairs were done by who and who knew how to do what always keep that in mind some people just forget that but hey it's the life we're living now the 349 was designed by Mark Lonbird to be a true performance cruiser that will be manageable by a couple or even a solo sailor. For couples with children, generally speaking, usually one parent's tied up with the little ones and the other parent is solo sailing the vessel. Now the main sheet has been set up as a double-ended sheet with tails running on both sides of the cabin top and through line organizers to the cockpit winches that are positioned next to each of the twin helms so that the helmsman can in fact trim the main sheet from both helms while steering the vessel. Now the jib sheet uses a sheeting system that was developed for high performance race boats like the one seen in the Volvo fleet. The sheets run through an eye that floats above the deck and is controlled by a downhaul that doubles as a barber hauler. You can control the shape of the jib fullness in the foot or tension in the leech with the sheet and this second control line, it's basically like having a three-dimensional sheet lead car that allows for excellent sail trim on the vessel. The ability to solo sail your vessel these days is so incredibly important, it's mind-blowing. Oftentimes, again, with little kids, or if your spouse or person you're sailing with is sick and not feeling well, you are going to be the one in control of soloing these vessels. And that's something to keep in mind. 
make sure you get yourself a vessel that you can solo sail because there will in fact be times you're gonna have to solo sail. The 349 is in fact big for a 35 footer and if you start comparing that length of the waterline to vessels from the 90s you will see that this 349 is actually in fact quite a bit larger than a lot of the 37 38 footers from the 90s now it does pack a lot into a small package forward there's a small anchor locker where a windlass can in fact be mounted and the halyards and control lines at the mast all run aft on the cabin top to winches there and to the winches aft of each helm the boom vang and backstay are adjusted with a very simple block and tackle system. There is also no traveler for the main sheet. Instead, the sheets run along the boom to two blocks, one of which is attached to two Dyneema stroops that hold the sheet blocks amidship. So again, incredibly, incredibly easy to solo sail this vessel. Now the cockpit itself is incredibly large as it's a dual helm vessel. I could spend the next week talking about this vessel in a different video every single day and still not cover all of the amazingness that the 349 has to offer. It does in fact pack a lot into a 35 footer. So if you haven't seen the Beneteau videos, I suggest go and check out the 35 footer in the Beneteau videos that I posted. Compare that to the 349 and let me know what you think. Which one's your favorite? Do you like them or do you hate them? Up next, the Genoa 380. She comes in with a length at the waterline of 35.14 feet, a length overall of 38.55 feet, and a beam of 12.34 feet with a maximum draft of 6.5 feet. She was first built in 2021. She comes with a Yanmar 29 horsepower diesel, a fuel tank of 34 gallons, as well as a water tank of 87 gallons. Now, like all the other models, she does have a wide variety of drafts, coming with a deep draft, a shoal draft, as well as a lifting keel. So any type of sailing environment you plan on sailing in, the Genoa 380 has a keel specifically for you that will fit all of your needs. Now, the Genoa 389 was in fact designed by Mark Lombard. And if you're not aware of who that is, he is a fantastic designer who has designed numerous sailboats and countless of them have in fact won sailboat of the year and the 389 is no exception to that as she did win best monohull cruising boat under 40 foot in 2022. Now, with these newer vessels, you should know by now that the beams are incredibly wide. And because of that, the cockpit on the Genoa 380 is absolutely enormous. It also has a huge foldable swim platform that folds down and adds yet again another seating as well as entertaining area for yourself as well as guests. It's a fantastic place to fold down, have a seat, watch the sunset, and grab yourself an adult beverage. Now, the 380 also has Genoa's walk around side decks that when they first came out, everybody basically picked on Genoa and said how ridiculous they were. And now everybody absolutely loves them because you no longer need to vault yourself over some combing in a cockpit to get to the side decks. All you have to do is simply walk around either helm and boom, now you're on the side decks of your fantastic sailboat. With Genoa being the fantastic innovators that they are, they are constantly solving problems you didn't even know that you had. But let's take a moment here to consider a V-berth. What exactly do you do in most V-berths under 40 feet? You sit there and try to figure out where exactly your head should go. Should it go at the bow or the stern? Where do your feet go and what exactly do you do with yourself in a small V-berth? Well, Genoa has solved that problem as what they've done is they've slanted the V-berth. It's no longer a V, ladies and gentlemen, as you get a full-size sleeping quarter in the bow of the vessel. So now you can really decide for yourself, do you want to sleep in the bow of the vessel or not? As you actually have an option for a comfortable living space in the bow and that's in fact where the master suite is as where it should have all Always been all along. We've really, really got to get with the times, ladies and gentlemen. These newer designs are far, 
far better for ease of use and your comfort while living full time on your sailing vessel. The Juno 380 does come in a very wide variety of layouts. She has the two cabin, one head version. She also has a two cabin, two head version. She also has a three cabin, two head version. Now there's a clear winner here, and in my opinion, it's the same design everybody should always get if you're picking up a vessel under 40 feet. You always should go with a two cabin, one head version because of all of the extra storage you get on board. It's absolutely mind blowing the difference. Now when companies, as they all do, try to stuff three cabins into a vessel under 40 feet, things start to become a bit limited. So in my opinion, always grab yourself the two cabin owner's version of any vessel under 40 feet. The 380 does fall at the lower end of Jeannot's new lineup, but I will be covering the other vessels throughout this week, so stay tuned for those. Now, the main and Genoa sheets are led aft through line stoppers on the combing and to winches by each of the dual helms, which makes it easy for you to solo sail this vessel, whether you're tacking or driving the vessel. Halyards and control lines are led through line stoppers on both sides of the companionway, as well with an electric winch on the port side. Now the electric winch is an option, and if you plan to pick up one of these used, get yourself one where someone included that option. The cockpit on this vessel is incredibly large, as I stated earlier. It's roomy and very, very comfortable with ample storage in the large cockpit lockers and and under the sole lazarettes. Many pre-2010 Genoes are fitted with a cabin top main single sheet system similar to the one pictured here on screen, which unfortunately are normally out of reach of the helmsman. Now, the option to bring the main sheet within easy reach by using what they call a modified double German system has become almost standard on many of the latest Genoes since around 2010. Now, the main on the Genoe 380 is trimmed with this double-ended main sheet known as the German sheeting system, plus a vang so you have complete control of the boom without the need for a traveler. The Genoa sheets pass through circular thimbles that float above the cabin top and are controlled with trim lines that lead to the cockpit. This allows you to open and close the slot in infinite variations without the need for Genoa tracks. Both sheeting systems are incredibly simple foolproof and easy to use. So again, when it comes to solo sailing this vessel, I could literally do it with my pinky toe in a heavy breeze. Cover the Genoa Sun Odyssey 410, an absolutely stunning vessel that has won numerous awards, including the 2019 Cruising Yacht of the Year by the British Yachting Awards, the 2019 Best Midsize Cruiser Over 38 Feet by Cruising World, the 2019 Best Sailing Yachts in Asia, and numerous others. This is an absolutely phenomenal vessel. She comes in with a length of the waterline of 38.42 feet, a length overall of 42.49 feet, and a beam of 13.09 feet, with a maximum draft of 7.02 feet that you will find on the lifting keel. She was first built in 2018. She comes with a Yanmar 40 horsepower diesel, with a fuel tank of 53 gallons, as well as a water tank of 87 gallons, and was designed by famous designer Mark Lombard. As with its larger siblings, the construction of the Sun Odyssey 410 is pretty straightforward. It has a hull compromised of solid fiberglass laminate set in polyester. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, that's a solid fiberglass hull. People just have no idea what they're talking about when they comment on these newer vessels. It's a solid fiberglass hull. It has a balsa cord deck, but that's only the deck itself. We really have to get people off of this misconception that you need an absolute ancient vessel in order to cross oceans. These newer vessels are built incredible with the latest technology and are absolutely phenomenal. And the Genoa 410 is no different. What's different about this boat is actually the hull form itself. It includes what they call a reverse destroyer bow, the leading root of which overhangs the static waterline by a few inches. Now what this does to the vessel is it creates an incredibly aggressive wave 
piercing stem that is complemented by a thick sprit that carries the anchor and can also serve as a tack point for a code zero or an asymmetrical spinnaker. The hull also sports a full length hard chine which is down low for increased stability and carries lots of its beam forward, again giving you much, much more space on these newer vessels. And as always, it also has the twin rudders, which is pretty much mandatory nowadays on these vessels that carry their beam well aft. Just like the Genoa Sun Odyssey 380, the 410 also carries what they call the groundbreaking walk-around cockpit, which was first introduced on the Sun Odyssey 440 and 490. This basically sees the side decks of the boat sloping downward as they run aft to merge with the cockpit sole behind the boat's twin helms. This in turn makes it easy for the crew to move from the cockpit to the deck without ever having to climb over the combings like you'll see in typical jungle gym fashion on some of the older vessels. It also allows the person at the helm to stand well outboard of the wheels when steering. Behind the wheels is a fold down transom to facilitate access to the water, which is always a bonus no matter where you're sailing as it makes access into and out of your dinghy much, much easier. Between them is a fixed cockpit table with fold down leaves, the body of which contains a handy dancy insulated cold storage bin. Think adult beverage cooler. This table body is also slightly offset to starboard to allow easier access to the transom. And when it comes to handling this vessel, it's incredibly easy to solo once again, even though it is a very large vessel. The double ended main sheet and jib sheets are both led to Harkin 46 winches mounted just for forward of the wheels on the cockpit combings within an easy reach of the helm. All other controls run to a pair of Harkin 40 winches on either side of the companionway. The main is controlled not with a traveler, ladies and gentlemen, but a bridle spanning the coach roof. The effort to do away with heavy hardware also sees the Genoa tracks stripped off the side decks and sheet leads for the jib handled by a pair of line controlled friction rigs. Moving on to the interior, it is at once surprising and consistent with the Sun Odyssey line, where innovation serves to heighten the aesthetic and the level of comfort. The partitions and the distribution of space were designed in a somewhat atypical fashion in order to maximize the interior space, both visually and physically. The eye easily follows the uninterrupted interior lines. Now she does come in numerous different layouts with a two cabin, one head, a two cabin, two head, a three cabin, one head, and a three cabin, two head. You can get it in a woodwork teak or a gray cedar. She also comes with numerous different drafts as usual with your deep draft keel, the shoal draft keel, as well as a lifting keel. And she is also, again, a CEA rated vessel. That means she is more than capable of offshore sailing as well as ocean crossings. When it comes to interior space on these newer models, it is simply phenomenal. There is so much space inside of this. And in fact, this Genoa Sun Odyssey 410 is as large, if not larger, than numerous pre-2010 48 and 49 footers. So what are your thoughts on the Genoa 410? Now I would suggest going back and checking out my video that I did on the Beneteau Oceanus 40.1, as these two are very, very comparable. But I must say, although I am a huge Beneteau fan, I believe the Genoa Sun Odyssey 410 comes out a bit ahead of the Oceanus 40.1. So let me know in the comments below what you think between the two of the vessels. The big boys, the large vessels, ladies and gentlemen. Today we have the Genoa 440. 
She comes in with a length at the waterline of 39.37 feet, a length overall of 42.65 feet, and a huge beam of 14.07 feet. With a maximum draft of 7.22 feet, she was first built in 2017, coming in with a diesel tank of 53 gallons, as well as a water tank of 87 gallons. Now, to put this vessel in perspective with some other large vessels on the market, she is much larger than a lot of, believe it or not, 50 footers on the market. She's bigger than something like the Oyster 485, and she is laughably larger than the Pacific Seacraft 44. Now, the Seacraft 44, that only has a length at the waterline of 33 feet, with a length overall of 44 feet. Ladies and gentlemen, I am here to tell you, get yourself a sailboat with a length at the waterline versus length overall of under a five foot difference, if possible and ideally speaking the reason for this is again the length at the waterline is your livable space on board and the length overall that's going to translate to your running costs your slip fees your haul outs maintenance things like that so you want to make sure that you're getting yourself a vessel with a small discrepancy between your length at the waterline versus length overall so that in turn you're not going to be paying an arm and a leg for your running costs while not enjoying all the benefits of that much living space. Now, if you own a Pacific Seacraft, don't start crying in my comments. Facts don't care about your feelings, and neither do I. I am simply here to share information about sailing vessels and the benefits, pros, and cons of each of them. So, don't start crying in my comments if you own a Pacific Seacraft or if you like them. That's good. Hats off to you. High fives. Unlike the other Genos that I just covered, the 349, the 380, and the 410, the 440 only has two options for your draft. There is a deep draft as well as a shoal draft. There is no option for a lifting keel like you can find on the other ones that I've recently covered. So keep that in mind if you live somewhere with big, big tides and you feel that a lifting keel can help you, then the 440 may not be for you. She is, of course, a CEA rated vessel. Again, that means she is more than capable of crossing oceans. Now, when it comes to vessels this size, especially if they are newer, they are more than capable of doing ocean crossings as well as circumnavigating the globe, as there are several people doing exactly that right now. So again, don't cry in my comments and start telling me it's a great dock sitter. In fact, there are people circumnavigating on this vessel and crossing oceans all of the time. In typical French building fashion, she does come in a variety of layouts that allows you to customize your vessel. It does come with a two cabin, one head version. A two cabin, two head version. A three cabin, two head version. as well as a four cabin, two head version. This vessel is absolutely enormous and you could easily live out the rest of your days in comfort cruising all over the globe on this fantastic Genoa 440. When it comes to sailing performance, this is where the 440 really starts to outshine its competition. It has what they call a scow bow. Now this is an innovation borrowed from ocean racing yacht designs, first seen in the mini transit class and now in many others. The clearly defined chines at the stern are pretty common these days, but the 440's chine never stops and is carried all the way forward to the plum bow, where it meets about eight inches above the knuckle. This fullness increases interior volume and buoyancy as well, while also improving performance. This is the vessel that in reality can just about sail itself. So solo sailing, this is no problem, even though it's incredibly large, especially for a vessel with an overall length of under 44 feet. 
When I talk about the scow bow, it's something you're not really going to understand unless you get a chance to go and take a test sail on one of these. Since the bow design is so buoyant, the fore and aft pitching motion is significantly reduced. In essence, the boat doesn't dig down into the waves, reducing that up and down pitching of the bow against the horizon which will seem to kind of level everything out. So when people are like, oh, these slap really hard. No, they don't. And when you say that, it just tells me you've never actually been on one and sailed it. The motion on these vessels is short and fast, and the increased buoyancy also allows the bow to stay up and dry. Now, typically, the further a boat heels, the more the bow will dig in, especially on race boats. They'll actually move the crew aft in heavy winds to combat this. But the bow will stay up and the boat will keep scooting forward. Additionally, the deck on the bow will stay remarkably dry, avoiding big digs into the waves that will help the boat retain its functional freeboard. Again, that's why we used to have big length at the waterline versus length overall difference. Differences, you'd heel the boat over, giving you a longer length at the waterline, hence increasing your speed. Nowadays, there's no reason for that, and this vessel, again, like I said, doesn't slap. When moving on to the interior of this vessel, some things that are absolutely noteworthy is there is three massive hull port lights on each side that make this one of the brightest monohull cabins you're ever going to find, and their locations bring light into both the salon as well as the cabins. Genoa has hidden most of its storage in the cabin, which lets your eye experience the full beam from hull to hull. There is no cabinetry at eye level, and that really opens up the space. There are twin doors between the salon and the V-berth, which features a rectangular queen-size berth that make the cabin seem absolutely enormous, and if you're just a cruising couple, you're probably going to keep those doors open all of the time. The Juno 440 is bold, forward-thinking design, and it will intrigue you not only at the dock, but impress you while under sail as well. So let me know overall what you think of the Juno 440. I love it. However, it's far too big of a vessel for me. But let me know in the comments down below if it works for you. Is this the size vessel you're looking for? And tomorrow I'll be covering the larger vessel of this. So that'll be pretty exciting. And speaking of exciting, we got some exciting news. Now the Annapolis Boat Show every year is in October. And this year, I'm going to try to make it up there. It's a bit far away, but... I'm going to try to make it up there and meet up with everybody. We'll go grab some beverages and have a good time. Also, if you're catching this video Sunday 5-8 of 2022, I'm going to go ahead and live stream tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern, give or take an hour of either side. So tune in for that and hopefully I'll see you later on tonight on the live stream. Also, please leave me a comment down below as it really, really helps the videos. And if you guys want to help me continue making videos, please consider becoming a patron. That's the only way I'm able to continue cranking out as many videos as I do. Last month, I think I pushed out about 40 videos and I love making daily content for you. But patrons really, really help make that happen. So for $10 a month, you do get full access to our members area where there are hundreds of members that can really help you get on the water sooner than later. In addition to my members area, I now offer one-on-one -on -one consulting available through my website at chasinglatitudes.com. So if you need help in any stage of the boat buying process or the entire way through, consider signing up for consulting through my website and that will also grant you a year's access to the members area.